Yeah, well, what we've been doing, because we know consumers take action off weather, we've actually been making it very easy for marketers to get access to the weather data and also weather targeting. So weather targeting takes that data another step further where it really is that scientific connection between uh, what's happening in the weather and that consumer behavior. And we've developed over 300 targeting triggers across verticals, so whether it's CPG, travel, entertainment, um, insurance. Um, and this gives, it, we've done the science for marketers essentially, so taking it beyond that data to provide insights so they know exactly um, when and where um, to target their messaging. Um, and we've come up with some really interesting insights, um, you know, one of them in particular um, around ice cream you know, you think ice cream sales, they sell in the summer, of course, but our data actually suggests that there's a big spike in the winter time. And you're like, oh, that's kind of curious, right? But when you think about the winter time, you want to stay inside, you want a comfort food, and ice cream is one of the top comfort foods. So we see that spike. And so we were able to deliver that to, you know, an ice cream brand. And so there's a lot of insights, insights like that that go beyond, um, you know, what you might think of your sales. So it really opens up a lot more opportunity. And so um, to further answer your question, we're making our weather data and our triggers available across the ecosystem with partners like Trade Desk, Media Math, Adobe, Magnite, so that brands can access that data um, you know, whatever technologies that they're using. Great, and, and also there's a very interesting part of um, privacy, because you guys are by zip code, is that correct? Right. Tell us about privacy and weather data. Yeah, so, you know, it's a privacy forward signal. It's using a zip code level, and so it aggregates a cohort at that zip code level. So there's no personally identifiable information in the targeting that we're using. And, you know, um, with the privacy laws changing, we have two new ones coming out in January. You know, marketers and publishers like myself, we are looking for privacy for ways uh, to connect the consumer with the marketer. Cool, and let's talk a little bit about the publication, uh, the, the site and the, the, the property. Yeah. So yeah. tell us how things are going in terms of the free, the subscriber, mm -hmm. and these new subscriber bundles you're doing. Right, so business as well, you know, we have about 400 million users that use us every month. And you know, we're about three years into our subscription business. Um, we started about three years ago when we actually hit a major milestone last year, we hit a million subscribers. Uh, which was, you know, really big, uh, you know, big step for the team, um, and we continue to grow that business. You know, I find that, um, you know, we're giving our consumers a choice. You know, whether they want to uh, support getting all this weather information by seeing ads, so ad supported, or they can choose not to see ads and to take, you know, the premium subscription. We made the decision years ago that our premium subscription would be more than just ad free, that we would actually be additive. So we would add more services on. So you get advanced radar, you get more weather data, um, and the plethora of things if you're a subscriber. And that's worked really well for us. It's, it's a little different model than maybe some of the other publishers were not gating the content because it's, it's really hard to gate weather data, especially when it comes to um, you know, the valuable alerts that people need to save their lives. So, so that business is going well. With subscriptions, you know, we believe, um, we've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, and one of the things that we've learned, and I'm a big proponent of, is you can run a subscription business by yourself and be very successful. But I also believe in the power of partnerships. And so we created a software that allows us to bundle our brand with other brands outside of our portfolio. And, um, you know, it was a big decision because the, the technology to do that is very complex. And, you know, it's a big decision on who, what brands you want to align your brand with. Um, but it's going really well. We launched uh, about two months ago with USA Today and TripAdvisor. And actually just this week we've launched with Consumer Report. So essentially what we're doing is we're offering our consumers the Weather Channel Premium app. Plus they can bundle with one of our partners and they um, get an easy way to manage their subscriptions, um, which is a real benefit because that's one of the pain points with consumers. You know, if you think about, I mean, how many subscriptions do you think that you have, Andy? Maybe five, digital, maybe, maybe probably more. 
So I thought I had five too, and my husband informed me a few weeks ago as he was going through the credit card statement. <laughs> um, no, we have 25. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you know, because you, it's beyond streaming, right? Subscriptions, there's all kinds of subscriptions mm -hmm. and memberships. So we're, we're offering a consumer an easy way to manage multiple subscriptions. And then all the bundles um, are at a savings, they anywhere from 30 to 50%. And so um, we're going to continue to partner with several partners um, and offer that to consumers. We think it's a, a really interesting way to grow the business. That's great. And of course, you guys are separate from the Weather Channel, but you have a lot of video. How's the video business going? The video business is great. You know, we are great partners with the Weather Channel TV. Um, and, you know, we are, we are separate. As you said, IBM owns the digital, all the digital properties of uh, the Weather Channel. We own the brand. Um, as well, but video is going really well. I mean, you're seeing um, a lot of usage on our platforms, but then you're also seeing a lot of usage within the social platforms, right? So TikTok, we have almost a million subscribers in TikTok, so that platform is really growing. Um, I think the key there is the video that you create for, you know, your website is a little bit different than the video that you create for the social platforms, and so you really have to have a strategy around that. Great, great. And um, what's exciting to you uh, going into the new year? Wow, there's a lot. Um, for us, we are really uh, looking and listening to our consumers. We put our consumers at the center of everything that we do. And, you know, we have learned over time, and we actually just did a survey, um, that consumers look to weather as a trusted source of information only second to their health provider uh, when it comes to managing their health symptoms. Um, and so that was really interesting to us. We've known there's always been a connection between health and weather, but that people are actually coming to us in order to manage those symptoms, to understand what weather is. So we want to expand on that and help them. Instead of them just having to look at the raw data or a chart, we want to actually provide insights to them that will help them uh, reduce their risk of symptoms, um, reduce their risk of flu, allergies, et cetera. Um, and so we are evolving the app to provide those types of insights and that information. Um, and then the other thing is um, we're going to bring some new emerging technologies to the app, um, something that hasn't been done within the industry, within weather. Um, that's going to be really exciting. And I think my product team would um, be upset if I told you any more, but we will stay in touch uh, and, you know, and definitely show you what's uh, ahead for the future, but that's something that will be coming out in the first half of next year.